and I felt good about it going forward. Um, and then the next day, she called my husband to complain. And she also told my sister-in-law to gossip about it, which as you can imagine didn't feel great. And now she's being really cool to me in person. And the whole thing feels like a big mess. Um, and I just kind of don't know where to go from here. So any advice you have, please, please love you both. Yes, this feels very familiar. Okay, so Lindsay, what I have learned is that the hard part of setting boundaries is not actually the setting of the boundary. It's actually not saying the thing. That's not the hardest part, okay? The hardest part of boundaries is withstanding whatever happens next, okay? The hard part of boundaries is being okay with the outcome, and the outcome of setting a boundary is usually people having feelings about it. It's right? like that Seinfeld episode where it's like, the taking of the reservation isn't the important part of the reservation. It's the keeping of the reservation that's the most <laughs> important part of the reservation. That is it. That is it. So the, the pattern is that we finally get the nerve to set the boundary with somebody, right? But we are so conditioned and obsessed with being liked that when the person has feelings about it, or when the person's mad at us or disappointed or cold or gossips, we take that as a sign that we did something wrong, that there's a problem that we now have to fix. And then we go about fixing things, which is usually an undoing of the boundary, <laughs> right? So it's like two parts. Setting boundaries is two parts. It's the first part where you're saying the thing and setting it. And then it's the second harder part, which is being like a strong little tree in a storm. When the storm starts and everyone has the feelings, just staying rooted and grounded until it passes, right? So I feel this is just reminding me of something that happened to me a while back. Okay, so quick story. So my kids go to school, right? And I have a complicated relationship with um, when my kids were in elementary school. Like I never, whenever I go to school to for a school event, I end up feeling like I did an actual school. Like I don't know where to stand. I don't know which moms to stand with or sit with. I'm not in on the social happenings of like the PTA. While I'm very grateful, I'm not in on it because of many reasons. So I feel a little bit anxious sometimes when I'm visiting school. And so I have also, because I'm an introvert and all the things, I have maintained over time that when I'm at school, I'm there to like see my kid and be with my kid. And I'm not very social, right? Which works out fine, usually. But there was a time recently where I realized that my kid was having a trouble with another kid. And I knew this other kid's mom, right? So I call the mom and I say, oh my gosh, this sucks. Like, let's help them figure it out, okay? And she says, well, actually this has been going on for six months. Hmm. And I said, wait, what, what? why didn't you tell me about this? And she said, well, honestly, I find you to be unapproachable. <laughs> Okay, sister, you, I'm sure you remember this day. Mm -hmm. I am yeah. sure that you remember me calling you from the car, hysteric, like freaking out. I thought that this was the worst thing that had ever, I, I thought that this was failure, like some kind of terrible failure as a woman that my kid could have been struggling and one of these mothers did not find me approachable. Right? I thought being un unapproachable was the worst thing that somebody could say about me. So later that night, I call Liz. You know, Liz is the, besides you, the other person that I talked to about all yes. of my challenges, my very many challenges. And I told her the story and I said, and then, and then she said, I'm unapproachable. And Liz was quiet. And then she said, okay, so, so what's the problem? And I said, she called me unapproachable. And Liz said, okay, so do you want to be approached? And I said, 
No. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, Okay, honey, then then well done. Good job, honey head. That's what she calls me, honey head. And I thought, oh my gosh. Okay, so the consequence of me taking care of myself in that school situation, right, is that some people might have perceptions of me. When we set a boundary, other people might have perceptions of us. And what our business is, is the boundary. What our business is not is other people's definitions of or perceptions of that boundary. Does that ring yeah. true? To it you? does. I think it's I think it's it's totally natural. I mean that mother in law of Lindsay, it's I mean, she's obviously using the tool she has and if she's gossiping and that's one thing. That's not the healthiest tool. But every time someone is everyone is always just adapting. They're either adapting to the boundaries you don't set or they're adapting to the boundaries that you do, right? So you can either choose to not upset the ecosystem and keep it the way it's always been, or you can choose to set something, in which case there's going to be shifts that happen around you. And I guess it's just, it comes down to what you always say, Glennon, which is like, you can either disappoint other people or you can disappoint yourself. But if maintaining the status quo, not setting your boundary, isn't isn't nothing. It is in fact disappointing yourself because you are aware of a boundary that you are then um, not maintaining because of the kind of uh, the disturbance in the force that it... Right, disturbance in the force. So you just have to pass beforehand, right? You say, I understand that I'm going to set this boundary and that there, there might be ripples and consequences that I will have to withstand in the short term because we teach people how to treat us. We set a boundary, we're changing something. We're changing a pattern that people have become comfortable with. So when we change a pattern, people become uncomfortable and that is okay. It is okay to allow people to be uncomfortable so that you can find some comfort in the relationship, right? And, and it, I think it's also okay to just say that's the price and I'm willing to pay that price because I have fought so hard for my peace that I think maintaining it is more important to me actually in this moment than being liked. And it's helpful because then you know that is a consequence that will happen. Yes. So it's not, it doesn't mean there's something wrong with your boundary. It means it's a natural consequence of setting boundaries. Yes. It doesn't mean that you've misstepped. No, it just means it's working. Carry on. <laughs> okay, we have another question. This one's from Kathleen. And she wrote, I understand my boundaries in general. In general, they are very clear to me. But when someone cr 